throughout the pandemic, I ended up purchasing a lot of microphones. But when I looked at some of the microphones I had purchased during the pandemic, I regretted purchasing some of them. In today's video, folks, I will share with you five microphones that I regret buying during the pandemic. I regretted buying them mainly because of the tone of my voice coming out of these microphones did not fit my personal taste. Besides for online training, I have also used these microphones I mentioned in today's video for some of the contents on my other YouTube channel. Now, this video is not a technical review video. This video is meant to be a self-reflection video. And I hope the lessons that I have learned from the past three years can be valuable for you also. Now, before we start with the first microphone, just in case you want to know only specific microphones I regret buying, you can check the timestamp by hovering the video player down below. All right, folks, let's start with the very first microphone I regret buying during the pandemic, the Rode Smart Life Plus and the Rode Wireless Go. I know technically these two products can be considered as two separate microphones, but along the way, you will find out why I only consider these two Rode products as one microphone. So far, you've been hearing my voice straight through the Rode Smart Life Plus that is clipped here and currently connected to the Rode Wireless Go. So I purchased the Rode Smart Life Plus during the pandemic because I wanted to make video contents outdoors using my iPhone. But after several contents, I found it quite impractical because I would have a dangling cable like this between me and the phone. And I found that quite annoying. Because of that reason, I searched for a simple wireless transmitter for the Lavalier microphone so I wouldn't have a dangling cable between me and the phone. And my choice at that time landed on the Rode Wireless Go. As we know, the Rode Wireless Go itself has a built-in microphone. So if you like how your voice comes through the Rode Wireless Go, you don't really need an additional Lavalier microphone for it. So you probably have seen several YouTubers hold the Rode Wireless Go on their hand and have it close to their mouth like this. Now, the Rode Wireless Go was not designed to be used handheld like this. It was designed to be clipped on to your clothes like this but in the world of content creation there aren't any hard rules you need to follow now as for me personally i don't like holding the road wireless go like this and i also personally don't like how it looks on me when it's clipped onto my clothes that's why i prefer using a lavalier microphone and have that lavalier microphone clipped to my clothes rather than the Rode Wireless Go. Another reason why I regret buying the Rode Wireless Go is because it doesn't work with several lavalier microphones. The Rode Wireless Go itself supplies 2.8 volts plug-in power. Several lavalier microphones require plug-in power higher than that. And those lavalier microphones may not work with the Rode Wireless Go. So if you want to use a different lavalier microphones that is not manufactured by Rode with the Rode Wireless Go, make sure to check the power requirement before you purchase the lavalier microphone. Now, as for the Rode Smart Life Plus, I don't like the tone of my voice through this microphone. I think the tone of my voice through this microphone is boxy and muddled, but this is my subjective opinion. Now, some of you may like the tone of your voice through the Rode Smart Life Plus, and if the Rode Smart Life Plus works for you, that's awesome. Keep on using it for making video contents. Now, some people use lavalier microphones when they're recording content outdoors. Now, this is also not a hard rule to follow. Yo, what's up everyone? Right now I am outside to test the capability of the Rode Smart Life Plus that is clipped here and connected to the Rode Wireless Go that is connected directly to the Sony a7 III. So as you can hear, there's some background noises around me right now. The crickets, the birds, the magpies, the Rode Smart Life Plus, has an omnidirectional polar pattern, so it will pick up any noise or any sound around it. So this is the tone of my voice through the Rode Smart Life Plus that is connected to the Rode Wireless Go and the Sony a7 III when used outdoors. One thing that you need to know about the Rode Smart Life Plus if you plan to use it for making video contents outdoors is its polar pattern. The Rode Smart Life Plus has an omnidirectional polar pattern. So in practical terms, this microphone will pick up any sound around it and does not have a good background noise rejection, especially when compared to other lavalier microphones that has a super cardioid polar pattern. So when you are recording video outdoors with this microphone, it may pick up noise like the traffic, the trains, or even the magpie. And those noises may ruin your video just like how it has ruined my videos in the past. So both the Rode Wireless Go and the Rode Smart Life Plus is the very first microphone I regret buying during the pandemic. Now let's move on to the second one. So the second microphone I regret buying during the pandemic is the Rode VideoMic Pro Plus that I'm currently holding right now. 
What you're seeing is an uncommon way to use the Rode VideoMic Pro Plus. This microphone is designed to be an on-camera microphone, so you would not usually hold it with your hand and have it close to your mouth like this. Usually you would have this microphone out of the frame and connect it directly to your camera. Many people use this microphone as a vlogging microphone. I purchased this microphone during Christmas 2020 after searching for an alternative microphone to the Rode Smart Life Plus. Now, during the pandemic, I mainly used this microphone for video content that I recorded outdoors. The first thing that I don't like about this microphone is how mushy is the tone of my voice coming through this microphone. I think the tone of my voice through this microphone is not open enough and lacking intelligibility. But that's my personal opinion. Now as this microphone is designed to be an on-camera microphone, it is a microphone that you may want to consider bringing with you when traveling. However, the microphone, the shock mount, and the wind muff are fully integrated and cannot be torn down into pieces which can be a problem whenever I want to put it in my camera bag as it occupies quite a space in my camera bag. That's why I never bring this microphone when I'm traveling. Now, this may not be a problem for some of you, but as for me, I'd like to maximize the space that I have in my camera bag. Okay, in a short moment, I will go outside and use this microphone just like how many people would use it as an on-camera microphone. Let's hear the tone of my voice through this microphone when recorded outdoors and when the microphone is a bit distant from my mouth. Yo, what's up everyone? I'm currently outside to test the Rode VideoMic Pro Plus that is connected to the Sony a7 III. As you can hear right now, it's a bit windy outside so we get to hear the effectiveness of the wind filter that comes with the Rode VideoMic Pro Plus. So I'm going to be quiet so that you can hear the effectiveness of this wind filter. So as you can see, I am an arm length away from the Rode VideoMic Pro Plus. I'm using a vlogging setup. A lot of YouTubers that does vlogging style would have the camera handheld like this. So this is the tone of my voice coming through the Rode VideoMic Pro Plus that is connected to the Sony a7 III. The Rode VideoMic Pro Plus is the second microphone I regret buying during the pandemic. But even though I don't like this microphone, I'd like to let you know that there are many great features on this microphone that are beneficial when you're making outdoor vlogging videos. Now, let's move on to the third microphone I regretted buying during the pandemic. So the third microphone that I regret buying during the pandemic is another Rode microphone the Rode Pod Mic. Right now, you are hearing my voice through the Rode Pod Mic that you are seeing in the frame right now. The Rode Pod Mic is a dynamic microphone and it is designed to be a podcast or a broadcast microphone. Therefore, you would normally have this microphone close to your mouth just like how I'm using it right now. The Rode Pod Mic that I have here is the first version of Pod Mic that was released back in 2018. Recently, Rode has released an updated version of Pod Mic that has both XLR and USB connectivity. Now, I don't own that version of Pod Mic, so I cannot make any opinion about it. So the story with this microphone started at the beginning of 2021 when my whole family moved from Perth to Brisbane. So I sent the gears that I already purchased in Perth to Brisbane using a courier. So the courier said that they needed two weeks to send all of my gears from Perth to Brisbane. I arrived in Brisbane earlier than the gears because during the pandemic several states in Australia have locked down policy, my gears unfortunately did not arrive in Brisbane on time. Now I already have scheduled an online training and because I did not want to end up facilitating an online training using an internal microphone of the laptop, I immediately searched for a budget microphone that would not cost me more than 200 Australian dollars. I landed my choice. On this microphone. I feel like the tone of my voice through this microphone is like I'm talking with my nose closed. If I can use that analogy to describe the tone of my voice out of this microphone. I only used this microphone on one online training session and after that session ended, I never used this microphone for facilitating online training nor for the video contents on my other YouTube channel anymore. Now, as for the build quality of this microphone, it is solid like a tank. But on the other hand, I also think for a microphone this size, it is unnecessarily heavy. In fact, this microphone is slightly heavier than the Shure SM7B, which has a bigger dimension than this microphone. The weight of this microphone is the second thing I do not like about this microphone. Now, when I looked at the list of microphones I regret buying during the pandemic, I realized three of the microphones are Rode microphones. In fact, I had another Rode microphone that I cannot show you in this video here because I've already given it to my sister, the Rode NT1. I'm testing on this Rode microphone because my brother asked me to from the other side of the country, even after we move apart. Sometimes you can never escape sibling demands. <laughs> the tone of my voice through the Rode NT1 isn't too muffled, 
but I personally think it is flat or too bland. I do acknowledge that several YouTubers like the tone of their voice through the Rode NT1, but for me personally, it's just not my cup of tea. And I also didn't like the design of the shock mount of the Rode NT1 that comes in the package, because when it is coupled with the microphone, I think it just does not look good to be shown in the frame. It literally can block a significant portion of my face, especially when you also put a pop filter that comes in the package. And that can be distracting for the viewers or the participants of my online training. I used the Rode NT1 on several of the training sessions that I facilitated back in 2020 before I left Perth and gave it away to my sister. All right, folks, now let's move on with the last two microphones that I regret buying during the pandemic. And the last two microphones are not Rode microphones. Now, the fourth microphone that I regret buying during the pandemic is the Sennheiser EA35S that you're currently seeing in the frame right now, the ones that I'm holding in my hand right now. So right now you're hearing my voice through the Sennheiser EA35S. Like every other microphone that I have mentioned so far on this video, this is not a terrible microphone, but I just don't like the tone of my voice through this microphone, just like every other microphones that I have mentioned on this video so far. But you may find this microphone works for your voice. This microphone is a handheld dynamic microphone. So in general, vocalists or public speakers would hold this microphone in their hand while singing or talking, just like how I'm using it right now. But back then, during the pandemic, most of the time, I would have this microphone on a boom arm while facilitating online training. So here is the thought process of how I landed my choice on this microphone. Back in 2020, my kids had to do homeschooling because many states in Australia have a lockdown policy. So because they were learning at home during this period, my kids sometimes would be noisy when I was facilitating online training at home. In 2020, when I still lived in Perth, I didn't have my own studio to facilitate online training. And back then, I had to facilitate online training in the middle of the living room. Because of the circumstances I had, I didn't want the noise of my kids made in the house to be picked up by the microphone. So I searched for a dynamic microphone that I can switch off directly from the microphone itself. I chose a dynamic microphone because when compared to condenser microphones, it would not pick up much reverberation from the living room that was not properly treated. My choice landed on the ea 35 as specifically because it is a dynamic microphone, it has a power switch, and because many people on YouTube said the character of this microphone is relatively brighter when compared to the Shure SM58. Now, back then, I put power switch on the microphone as a factor to consider when buying a microphone for facilitating online training because I found that muting myself from the microphone was much faster and relatively easier than from the virtual meeting tool. I know this may be a silly reason but that was my thought process back then as someone with not much knowledge about audio and microphone. Now, even though this microphone solves the problem that I experienced back then, and even though it is relatively brighter when compared to the Shure SM58, it turns out that after using it in several videos and after using it on several online training sessions, I didn't like the tone of my voice through this microphone. I felt the tone of my voice through this microphone is like someone who is talking while diving underwater. Well, that's my subjective opinion about my voice through this microphone. I almost never use this microphone anymore lately because now I already have a properly treated studio, the one I'm currently in right now. I still kept this microphone just in case a community I belong to needed a handheld microphone for their events. I found that for certain vocalists, this microphone suits well with the character of their voice. So the Sennheiser EA35S is the fourth microphone I regret buying during the pandemic. Now, let's move on to the fifth and the last microphone I regret buying during the pandemic. What would that microphone be? Let's check it out. Now, if you notice, I used this microphone on the intro of this video. And this is the Aston Spirit, the fifth microphone I regret buying during the pandemic. The story of how I chose this microphone is also interesting. As I have mentioned earlier in this video, I purchased the Rode NT1 and found the tone of my voice through it is too flat. Because of that reason, I searched for another microphone that I thought would be brighter for my voice. So I initially landed my choice on the Aston Origin, the younger sibling of the Aston Spirit. But because the one I got 
that was defective after I used it for a few days, I returned it back to the music store. The music store contacted Aston, and because the supply chain back then during the pandemic was disrupted, I needed to wait around two months to get a replacement of the Aston Origin. So instead of waiting for the replacement, I added some more money and got myself this microphone, the Aston Spirit. So I landed my choice on the Aston Spirit because when I looked at its frequency response graph, it looks similar to the Aston's origin. But that slight difference in the frequency response graph is actually has quite a significant difference in the tone it actually produces. So that was another lesson for me on microphones. Never judge a microphone just based on the technical specs. In this case, the frequency response graph. I recorded several video contents that I have uploaded to my other channel with this microphone. And when I heard it back, I didn't like the tone of my voice through this microphone. I thought it's too sizzly and sometimes it can be too piercing. I personally feel the tone of my voice through this microphone sound more sibilant than through other microphones. I also felt that the tone of my voice through this microphone is too thin and airy. And I just realized after I looked at the frequency response chart of the Aston Spirit, it boosts the air frequency relatively higher than other microphones. Now, even though I do not like the tone of my voice through this microphone, Aston themselves said that this microphone excels on acoustic guitar and vocals. So I have no experience using the Aston Spirit on acoustic guitar and on vocals yet. So I think if you have an intention to use the Aston Spirit for musical instruments or for vocals, you may find this microphone work for you. I do acknowledge that this microphone is built like a tank. It's also quite heavy, but not as heavy as the Rode PodMic that I have discussed earlier. The Aston Spirit is the last microphone I regret buying during the pandemic. Now I'm still keeping these microphones as a point of reference for other microphones that are less brighter or darker than this microphone. I may use this microphone in several videos that I will record in the future. To close off today's video, I'd like to let you know that all of these microphones I mentioned in today's video are not objectively bad. And just because I don't like these microphones, you may find it work for your use cases or you may like the tone of your voice out of these microphones. I think our taste on microphones is similar to our taste on food. I may not necessarily like the foods you like eating, but that doesn't make that food bad. And from this whole experience in the past three years, searching for the perfect microphones, I have learned the most important lesson of all. There are actually no perfect microphones. I have found that every microphone is designed for certain use cases. Every microphone is designed for the specific sound we want to produce. So that is all from me today, folks. Thank you for watching today's video. Now, before you close off today's video, I have one question for you. Do you have any microphones you regret buying but still keeping? If there are, let me and the whole community know by leaving a comment down below. I'd love to learn from your experience also. Until then, enjoy the rest of your week, folks. I will see you in the next video. Bye.